Okay, so this is the US standard algorithm for subtraction. This is the strategy that most parents breathe a sigh of relief for, since this is the one that most of us adults grew up on. And just like we learned, when we find the difference between two numbers, larger number on top, smaller number on bottom, and the only difference, instead of calling it borrowing, again, we call this regrouping, just like we did in the addition algorithm. And we line up the place values, as usual. And for some of my kids who sometimes forget, they like to just do 2 minus 4 is 2. Um, but of course, that's going to be a negative number, so that's not going to work. And so sometimes to remind them, we just say, bigger bottom, better borrow. So in this case, bigger bottom, better borrow. So I've got four tens. I'm going to take one of those tens away. And that one ten, I can turn that into ten ones. I'm going to add that to the ones I already have, which is two. So now I've got 12 ones total. Now I can take 12, or 4 from 12 rather, and that's going to be 8. If I take 3 tens from 7 tens, that's going to be a negative number. So instead of doing that, I'm going to take 100 away, leaving me 8 hundreds. And I already have 3 tens. I'm going to take that 100 and regroup that into 10 tens. Add that to the tens I already have, which is now 13 tens. And now I am able to take 13, or sorry, 7 from 13. So that's going to give me six tens. Eight hundreds minus six hundreds is two hundreds, leaving me a total of 268. Now, one thing that's interesting is this isn't always the most efficient strategy. My kids always laugh at this, but you know, luckily with all the subtraction and addition they've done, they understand the concept pretty well, and a lot of them can use mental math. And I tell them a story about how it, when I was in school, I had a problem like this, and I, I had no idea I could count up or anything else when I was in elementary school. I learned the algorithm, that's all I could use. If I did anything else, I would get it wrong because I didn't use the algorithm. So, you know, I always tell the class, yeah, so this is what I had to do. I can't take 0 from 7 or it's negative, or 7 from 0. I can't take 9 from 0, 9 from 0. So I'm going to have to borrow from the thousands place. I took 1,000 away, the only 1,000 I had. Cash that in for 10 hundreds. And now I can borrow from the hundreds place. So I take 100 away, leaves me 900s. Take that 100 that I just took away and can now give that, regroup that to the tens place, which equals 10 tens. And now I can take 110 away from here, regroup that into 10 ones. And now I can finally subtract seven tens from 10 ones, sorry, seven ones from 10 ones is three. Nine minus nine is zero. Nine minus nine is zero. The answer is three. Whereas you know, a lot of times I'll say, okay, guys, how did you figure that out? Well, I counted up. 997 plus 3 is 1,000. Boom, done. So mental math can sometimes be much more efficient. And also, this strategy right here, when I have to borrow from more than a few places, um, a lot of times the flexible number line or counting up will be actually more efficient. It'll be more accurate. They're using addition, and it's quicker. So... The only time the subtraction algorithm is always much more efficient is if you know if you're in numbers in the hundred thousands, then obviously, and there's more than a you know twenty thirty thousand away, um, then a lot of times the subtraction algorithm will be more efficient. But again, for these types of numbers, um, we really have the kids think about which strategy is going to be most efficient for them, and because they're they have so many strategies in their toolkit, they're able to kind of pick and choose and figure out. Oh yeah algorithm is great for this one, or maybe the counting up or the flexible number line. So again, the one thing we have here is a lot of kids who are able to think creatively using multiple strategies, and that's what we want for math. We want creative thinking.